Hi everyone, and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make this card, you can visit my online store and the link is in the description box below. Today I'd like to share with you my third paper pumpkin alternative project. And this project comes from the October 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit called Joy to the World. So this fun kit comes with everything you need to create eight cards of two different designs. And if you'd like to watch me unbox this kit or see any of my other alternative projects, you can click up here in the top right corner and there is a link to the playlist. So what I like to do with my paper pumpkin kits is take the contents of the kit and create alternative cards. And so today we're going to be learning how to make this beautiful card. Don't miss out on the fun. Make sure to subscribe by November 10th to receive next month's paper pumpkin kit. This kit will give you everything you need to create beautiful and fun projects. Subscribe by clicking on the link below in the description box. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna cut down our card base. Now, this is my last card base, and I want to actually keep it intact in case I want to make some other alternative cards with it. And so I'm just gonna walk you through the steps. Now, the card bases that came in the kit are a little larger than the standard US size card. And so we're just gonna start by trimming off the top. And so you're going to line up one side on a half inch, and your other side is gonna be at five and three eighths. And then you're just gonna trim this and remove that half inch. Next, you're gonna cut it in half, and it's going to cut directly in half is four and one eighth inches. And then you're going to have a solid and a gold side. Then we're going to take each one of those sides and cut it at two and a half inches. And that's going to give you a larger and then a smaller strip. And we're going to be using those on our front of our card base. And then take the gold side and do the exact same thing at two and a half inches. And you're going to have a large and a small strip of the gold pattern. Then you're going to take your envelope and you're just going to trim off the flap here. You just line it up on the straight edge of the side, remove the flap, and then cut the flap down to a half inch by four and a quarter inches. And there's plenty of space here. You could probably even get a couple pieces from that one flap. Okay, so here you can see that we've cut those down and we have a large piece. And this one is of the gold, but you should also have one of the solid crumb cake. And then we'll have a skinny piece. And this one's of the solid, but you should also have a gold skinny piece. And then you may have two pieces that are a half inch by four and a quarter inches of the envelope pattern. So you'll notice from my first card that we have the opposite sizes, right? So we have the solid piece here and then the skinny piece there. And then we've used that second piece here on the front. So the next thing you need to do is take the smaller of the um, embossed Whisper White cardstock. So this one has that kind of sweater feeling to it. And we're gonna cut a three inch size circle. And this just barely fits that shape. If I turn it over, you can see that I have a little bit of overhang on the die. However, the die is actually gonna cut the paper. So if it would have been over like that and I would have seen the cut line, then it would have been too large for my paper. So this particular die does come from the Layering Circles Framelit dies. And this is just a really great set. You've got scalloped and um, straight edge circles and they come in a range of sizes. And so this one cuts about a three inch circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this through my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and then I'll be right back. So that is all done. And you will need a couple other pieces from the kit. So one of the flower die cuts, one of your choice of a text, the gold lettering, and then one of the small uh, stitched labels. And then you will need a card base. 
And so this is just a piece of Whisper White cardstock. It's been cut to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and scored at four and a quarter. So the first thing we need to do is our stamping. And there's not a ton of stamping um, for this card. We are going to do some more gold emboss stamping. And you may have noticed from my other alternative projects that I have just been in love with the gold embossing and how it coordinates so nicely with the gold foil card base that came in the kit. And so what I've done here is I've taken the three berry stamp and we've stamped it in Versamark randomly on the solid piece. So for this card, it was on the larger piece and for the card we're making today, it's going to be on the smaller piece. And um, we're going to then heat emboss it with more gold embossing powder. So just begin by grabbing your Versamark and then if you want, you can remove the static with <clears throat> an embossing buddy. And then ink that up and then you're just randomly stamping and it's a little bit hard to see random stamping with a um, Versamark ink. So just kind of try to remember where you have stamped and you do want to go to the edges so that it feels a little bit seamless and just go all the way down. Sometimes Versamark will just show a faint image of that stamp. And so you can kind of see where you're stamping based on that faint image. Okay. So now is the little bit of the tricky part. You're gonna hold it and without smudging that ink, you're going to want to add some gold powder and tap it off and do it on the other side. And tap off any excess. If you have any that are, um, the powder is kind of sticking to a certain place, you can use a small paintbrush to kind of um, clean, to kind of clean up those um, areas. Okay, so now we're going to take the heat tool and we're going to heat emboss this and you want to go until it's nice and shiny. Okay, so that's all done. And I just love the delicate nature that that stamp brings to that piece of paper. And it goes really well with the other images we're using for the card. So you're going to wanna to just take your card base and fold it in half on the score line, and then use a bone folder to make a nice crease. Then you're going to add the pieces to your card. And they can either be, um, added so that your dots are on the left and your stripes are on the right, or you can switch it so that you have the stripes on the left and the dots on the right. Um, either way, it doesn't matter and it's totally up to you. For this card, I did the larger piece on the left and the smaller piece on the right. I think I'm gonna do the same here. So I'm gonna go with the larger piece, which for this card is the stripes. And there's gonna be a thin border. It should be about a 16th of an inch all the way around. So just make sure that you've got that. And then you're gonna add the smaller piece to the left, or to the right, excuse me. And that should just go right up next to that other piece and nice and even on there. Okay, so we've got those two fun gold patterns for our card. So next we're going to take this circle that we've made. Now if you don't have any more of this um, embossed piece, you could just use a Whisper White piece and emboss it um, with your own embossing folder. So Stampin' Up! has some really great embossing folders. 
and I've just placed it at a slight angle. You could place it nice and straight like I've done here. Um, either one, um, either direction is fine. Then we're going to add our strip and this just pulls in a little bit of color. And that's going to go at the bottom. We're going to have a little bit of that uh, round. We're going to have a little bit of that circle piece peeking out underneath. And make sure your words are going the right way. You don't want to have upside down letters here. Next, we're going to add our flowers. And we're going to do a fun technique where we have them flat on one side and then use dimensionals on the other to give some three-dimensional feeling to this element. But we're still getting a nice solid connection to the card where we want to place the um, gold word because um, we don't want that to catch on anything and come off our card. So I have the flat adhesive here under the flowers, and then I've placed two dimensionals under the leaves. And then this just kind of goes at an angle. There's kind of um, a little bit of a curve happening here, and we want it to go with the curve of the circle. So what I'm looking to do is this little bump from the larger flower is just going to go near the bottom and then the top, this um, top leaf is going to the edge. So it kind of goes along that line, that circle line. Okay, so we're going to do some stamping. So we're going to use so whichever word you've chosen here. So there's a love, there's peace, there's joy, um, and then there's also the different languages. And so you can choose whichever one you want. And then if you have that option to add a little more um, of that sentiment from the stamp set, so you could do joy to the world, or you could do peace to you and yours. Um, so whatever you want to add as that second part of your sentiment, Let's just look quickly. So there's sending. So you could even put sending peace and put your sending up here and then your peace comes down lower. Um, joy to the world, love to you and yours. Those are all some options. So for this card, I'm using the to you and yours and I'm gonna grab that and place it on a clear block. And it's gonna be inked up with the Just Jade from the kit. And then you're going to stamp that on the small label. I think I need just a little more ink on this side. And just right there in the center. Good pressure. And then what I've done is it's a little large for me. I wanted it to be a little skinnier. If you're okay with this size, you can just go ahead and put it down. And then you're going to put your love over it. But because I wanted it a little skinnier, I actually trimmed right along that stitching. So I've just taken my paper snips and right along that stitched line, which is a little bit hard to see, I've just trimmed um, this label to be just slightly smaller. And the reason I've decided to use this label instead of just a piece of Whisper White cardstock is because this paper matches that um, embossed paper. Sometimes if I use um, Whisper White, the Whisper White is just such a, a bright white that there's a little bit of a color change between those two papers. And so you can see here that it matches that paper nicely. But if you used, oh, that card base got dirty. But if you use those two different colors, maybe you can see that there's a little bit of a color difference there. Okay, so I'm going to add this just with some more, um, just regular adhesive. You could also use glue dots. And it's just going to sit right above that, um, right on the top of this cherry cobbler pattern paper. Just something like that. And now we're going to add our gold lettering. And I'm just gonna do that with some liquid glue. And I'm gonna just add some little dots of glue 
around these letters. So it doesn't need to be all over, just a little bit here and there to hold the letters down onto my card. Okay. So you can use your pickup tool to pick up delicate things like this, and then you can like hold it on the edges. And you're just going to place it. I wanted mine to be at a little bit of an angle, and you want it to touch your flowers, and then just go right above that greeting. And so the very last thing we're going to add is a little bow. And so go ahead and trim your twine. So if you have some big pieces, I've noticed that the twine sometimes will bunch in places. And so you can just take your finger and run that over it and it sometimes will pull that bunch off. So anyway, we're gonna cut about eight to 10 inches of twine depending on how big you want your bow to be. I've cut eight inches and just find the middle and then tie a little bow. And then you're just gonna add it to the bottom here of your greeting with a glue dot. I'm going to flip it so that the ends are coming down. And then this one is a little long, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim that slightly. All right, so that card is all done. And you can get two cards from one card base. So you can see how fun that is to have those different patterns in the background. And um, you have plenty of supplies to get two of these cards from that kit. I hope you've enjoyed watching me put these alternative cards together today. If you're interested in getting your own subscription of Paper Pumpkin, you can visit the link in the description box below. You can also visit my blog, creativechelsea.com, to get a written tutorial of this project as well as see close-up images. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.